but I would 100% do Battle Stations again. It's a nice. He's not nah, fuck that. He's smoking dick. What's poppin' YouTube? 911 the baby go. Welcome to the Go Farm. I got something for you. Now, it's been a minute since I actually made a video giving my two cents on it, but considering that Business Insider has made a video this year about Navy Boot Camp, I thought I'd give my reaction on it. Without further ado, just make sure to like the video so this can reach out to more people who may find this video useful. And let's get started. Now, get off my death. Now, what? This division of U.S. Navy recruits is in week three of their 10 week boot camp. Get him up, Holcomb. I want to start by saying that one of the funniest things about boot camp is that these people can't just throw right, you know, they just can't beat you in the fucking mouth. And so a lot of people, they like when they see how animated the RDCs are with all that damn bouncing, get off my dick. Like the recruits tend to freak out, like, oh, like like you're gonna get your ass beat or something. Like no, you're not gonna you're not gonna get your ass beat. Uh, so I just think it's funny how animated they are because a lot of people don't realize that these guys have rules and guidelines that they have to follow as well as you. Now that's not to give you the big head to say, motherfucker, you ain't gonna beat my ass. So no 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 no, don't go in boot camp with that type of attitude. In fact, that's one of the purposes of boot camp is to kick that type of attitude out of you. I'm just saying that really this is a mental game. There's really no reason to be freaking out. Just do what you're told. It's supposed to hurt. They're enduring what's known as an intensive training exercise, or ITE session. Push-ups, get there. It lasts for about 40 minutes without a break. Up position. I told you yesterday I was going to get mine. Y'all been pissing me off for a week. Between not working together, thinking this is a joke, and it's not. You arguing, not wanting to step up to lead. You're the leader, you follow. That's simple. Stop with this. Okay, I probably ain't shit for this. Boot camp, mark my words, is going to be one of the funniest experiences that you have ever experienced in your entire life. However, the principles that they're trying to teach you in boot camp isn't. And I, once you graduate boot camp, you'll understand more about what I'm saying. You know, from the outside looking in, you're like, boot camp's a joke. How dare he say, say such a thing? But once you actually graduate boot camp, you'll understand what I'm saying. This individuality and work as a team. It takes everyone a little bit, I think, to realize the big message. We are one family, we are one team. There are no more individuals. IT is not fun. It's to help you remember what you did wrong so that you don't do it again. We had enough? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, the f we have it. This is Navy Boot Camp. Every year, more than 40,000 recruits graduate before becoming sailors and officially joining the fleet. It happens here at Recruit Training Command Great Lakes, located about 35 miles north of Chicago. RTC Great Lakes is the only boot camp for enlisted U.S. Navy sailors. Who's going to a submarine? Holy yeah. Why? More money. More money? Absolutely, 100%. Base pay for enlisted sailors is about $22,000 a year. Sailors commit to actively serve for at least four to six years, depending on their specialty or rate. $22,000 really is not a lot of money a year. That, like, that, that's trash. However, I, I do want to put into your head that starting out, you're more than likely going to be staying in like a barracks. Like your medical is going to be free, your dental is going to be free, all of that good shit. So you're going to be saving a lot of money at the same time this is the perfect time for you to save money don't get out of boot camp and just start going to spend money on dumb shit like <laughs> to be quite honest with you if you be cheap your first few years you can easily save ten thousand twenty thousand within like a couple years but again it depends on how good you are with managing money starting out you're not going to get paid much at all but because your basic needs are going to be taken care of that does allow you the opportunity to save money Whereas in the normal civilian world, majority of the majority of that money would like no bullshit be going towards your bills. There is no special skills required prior to signing that commitment. We were able to take any civilian off the street and transform them into a smartly disciplined, physically fit, basically trained sailor. And I'm not going to lie with you. That statement that he just made, for the most part, is true. You know, obviously there's certain health 
uh, limits and stuff. But for the most part, they'll take anybody and, you know, turn them into a sailor. But this is why the lifestyle of an enlisted sailor and the lifestyle of an officer is almost black and white, day and night difference. My theory is that because you're so easily replaceable, the Navy has a way of looking at officers as not as easily replaceable. So an officer's life, and if you don't know anything about officers, they normally have to have a degree in order to get into the officer program. They're considered as a bigger asset than you are. You're kind of considered as more expensive. You never get told that though, but that's why you should subscribe to this channel because I'm gonna fucking tell you. The night of arrival. Let's go! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Buses driving from a. I remember when I first got off of that bus, I was literally in the back. I was like, here we go with this bullshit. <laughs> O'Hare Airport bring about 100 new recruits to the recruit in processing facility. Let's go! We want to put them in a stressful environment to, to show them that even though it might be stressful for them, they can get through it. You're moving too slow! And then it kind of like sets the tone for the rest of training. What the f are you looking at, guy? Where did I tell you to look? Where? Where did I tell you to look? Welcome to Recruit Training Command. I'm Chief Walters. I'll be one of your facilitators this evening. When I tell you to, you will remove your cell phone. You're going to call home. Call your parents. Call your recruiter. I don't care who. But you're going to let them know that you arrived here safely. You have one minute. Go. What up, man? Hey, I just made it in. Um, I don't have long to speak, but I just want to tell you that I made it safely, but I'm okay. You got 45 seconds. Hurry up. I'll get through it. I got to go. I'm going to say this. Make sure that your phone is charged so that you can get your, you know, your free phone call or whatever the case may be. But if nobody answers, don't be all depressed and <laughs> like, bro, chill out. <laughs> uh, it used to be boot camp was eight weeks. I think they just recently put it at 10 weeks now. But essentially, it's just two months of some change. The time, like, you can get through it. Like, it's not the end of the world. Is this going to be stressful and a little emotional? I mean, I guess, but like, like, like. Don't be, don't, don't be a little bitch. Like, <laughs> suck it up. You'll be all right. I called my mom. It was definitely emotional, though, because you kind of know that's the last time you're going to be able to contact your family for a little bit. Love you very much. Simple. You guys have a good one. Bye. You understand the words coming out of my mouth? Yeah. What are you saying? Yep, to It's yes, to What is your problem, guy? What is your problem? Why are you moving so slow? You're on my time now, not your time. Hurry up. It was brutal, I won't lie. It was a uh, culture shock. You are learning pretty much how to be a new human. You do not know what the f you're supposed to be doing at any given time. You will stand in attention until told to do otherwise. At no point in time will you look a staff member in the eyes. That's f rude and disrespectful, and that's the quickest way to piss us off. Is that understood? Yes, now, we never was told when I was in boot camp not to look somebody directly in the eye. Granted, we just kind of naturally knew to stare off into space, but... uh. I do think it's kind of interesting how they're showing that, you know, a lot of these RDCs be talking kind of reckless, but I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think they're going to show you just how fucking reckless they ass be talking because, you know, it, you, there's still got to be some level of political correctness. What the fuck was that that just went off? There still has to be some level of political correctness, you know, for the, for the, main, for the mainstream, but this is interesting. How about some motivation? Is that understood? Yes, Chief! Recruits receive their ditty bags. Hey, hurry up. Let's go. Get your socks off my table. Let's go. Which hold their different uniforms, hygiene products, and basic items they'll need for boot camp. Hurry up. Go, 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 go. Recruits must provide urine samples to make sure they have no drugs in their systems. I saw this when I was in boot camp. Literally, like, I, like the video said, they're going to test you. They're going to drug test you as soon as you get there and a lot. And if you fail that drug test, you're getting sent right back home. Like that is like, don't do it. Like if you smoke weed right now, just stop. Like it's a waste of fucking time. It is legitimately a waste of time. I don't know what type of discharge they got. God forbid a dishonorable one, but don't do it. It's a waste of time. Let it go. If you just really need to, you know, do your weed or whatever the case may be, finish out your contract and then move to, I don't know, the state of Washington and smoke to smoke till you can't smoke no more. But don't don't risk it. This is a waste of both their, the, the Navy's time and your time. More importantly, your time. Those who can't immediately provide a sample are ordered to hydrate until they can. Although male and female recruits sleep in different compartments, some train in gender-integrated divisions. 
After being assigned to divisions, recruits wait to meet their Recruit Division Commanders, or RDCs. Get the f up! Let's go! Turn around! Back the f up! Signified by their red shoulder cords. Well, it depends. When you first start boot camp, there's something that's called P-Days, which is basically, it's these little awkward days in the beginning where they're like getting all your paperwork together, all your medical paperwork and all that bullshit. So you don't really meet your RDCs at the very beginning. Uh, in fact, a lot of the people that are going to be in charge of you for that temporary uh, moment in P-Days, a lot of them going to be bored as fuck and probably even try to get to know you a little bit. They're still going to be a dick because they can't have you thinking shit is sweet, but the real boot Boot camp does not start until you legitimately are over with um, over with P days and you actually then meet your RDCs. These RDCs will be with the division until they graduate from boot camp. Did we say you could talk? They want to be here to be sailors. So that's our job to train them, to help them get there. Why are we so slow? Hey, you, isn't he taller than you? Yes, chief, no chief, I chief. We're not their friends. We're here to make them sailors. Why are you looking at recruit? Do I owe you anything? You want them to be uncomfortable, right? You want to get them out of their comfort zone. Bootcamp is hard, but when you go out to the fleet, if you make a mistake, you're going to kill somebody. Look, here's the thing. I don't, and I hope you guys don't mind me, you know, reacting to a reaction video. But here's the thing about uh, boot camp, man. You're going to realize how many characters there are in the world. It, the, one of the hardest things about boot camp is not laughing at some of the responses that people give when they're getting shitted on by their RDCs. That is because then it's going to make you a target and you like, fuck, <laughs> shit is, ah, damn, I almost missed it. Right now it's lives are at stake. So we want them to understand that, that the bigger picture. Is they got they gonna show Dragon Lady? Have to shave their that looks heads. like Dragon Lady. Female recruits. Ah man, I think they showed a glimpse of her, but whenever you come to get your when it's time for you to get your haircut done, there's an infamous lady that does it. They call her the Dragon Lady. She's a uh, older Asian woman and she's gonna fuck your head up. I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you right now. Like, Jesus, if you had anything that resembled a decent lineup, <laughs> that shit's gone immediately. Your hair back in a bun or wear it down as long as For the it males. does not extend below the back of the collar. The new recruits pay their first visit to the galley where they eat in silence and stare straight ahead until they're dismissed. Table eight, get up and get out! They'll need their strength for their first test of boot camp. Come on, push it up. An initial physical assessment known as the pacer test. Everyone up timed intervals of push-ups, planks, and running. Now, I don't know if they still do this, but in boot camp, like, like they said, initially you're going to be tested on your, uh, your, your physical attributes. There may still be an opportunity to advance and rank early in boot camp. There's going to be like a general military knowledge test and a physical test. You need to pass both of those the first time. So it would behoove you to brush up on your general Navy military knowledge and to make sure that your fat ass is in shape before you start boot camp because you can get more money faster if they still do it in boot camp, which I'm pretty sure they probably still do. Actual recruiter. But yeah, don't 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 go to boot camp out of shape and then wait for boot camp to get you in shape. Be ahead of the game. Get some money faster. Not every recruit shows up where they need to be. That's okay. That's what we're here for. Put your hands by your side. Look at everybody else next to you. Fix yourself. If we identify individuals that are struggling, then we can curtail the training to make sure everyone's on a level play playing field to be successful. Two minutes on the left. Recruits have two chances to pass the test. Two, two, six. If they fail, they're recycled into another division where they'll keep trying until they can move forward. In week one, recruits are tested on their ability to swim. Step. I'm gonna tell you right now, that fall seemed like it takes fucking forever. Like when I jumped off that motherfucker, I was like, he needs some milk. Damn. God forbid you're in that abandoned ship scenario where you do have to leave the safety of your ship. The Navy has deemed that we need to be able to implement a swim qualification to ensure your safety and the safety of your shipmates. Everyone in the Navy has to have a third class swim qualification. The third class qualification consists of stepping from an elevated platform. So 
surfacing unassisted, swimming 50 yards, then doing a five minute prone on your front, known as a prone float, or on your back, known as a supine float. Okay, I hold knew. up. I got to pause it real quick. Know how to swim a little bit. <clears throat> Black people, let's talk real quick. Uh, people of the Caucasian persuasion uh, community, us black people need to talk real quick. Just skip uh, three minutes ahead of the video if you want to. Black people, uh, the swim test. Uh, do yourself a favor. <laughs> <laughs> and learn how to swim before Navy basic training. At least like the basic fundamentals fundamentals of it because there's going to be a test where you have to stay afloat for like what is it? I think like three, three and a half minutes almost four minutes or something like that and let me tell you something. Black people are notorious for failing that test. And yes, you can go back and retry the test and retry the test. But when I did it, I'm not gonna lie, I failed like once or twice. I can't remember how many times. I think it was. I think it was once though. But I remember when I went back to retake the test, there was literally a line of black people, nothing but black people, who also failed. Who was just sitting there cheering me on, like, "Yeah, you got it." <laughs> it was a hell of a fucking time. And luckily, you know, I, I passed it, obviously. But I, I never had a problem with looking underwater. So when I was floating, I, I had a trick with, that I was that I did in order to pass. I'll try to share this with you. Basically, I just let all of my I, I let go of my body weight and I floated. I held my breath for about maybe 30 seconds if I could. And I kept my eyes open. That way I could see anyone that was around me. And what a lot of people would normally do is that they would panic and they would try to use my body as like like, I don't know, some sort of fucking log to push under so that they can survive. And like I said, because I kept my eyes open, I would oftentimes swoosh my ass away from them. Like, oh, hold up, bitch, you got me fucked up. <laughs> and then after my 30 seconds was up, I would literally I would literally go up to the top a little bit, get like a quick, no bullshit, two seconds of breath, and then I would just go back under for uh, 30 seconds, just letting my body float. I don't know. You're probably a lot better swimmer than I am, but I'm just saying that's what I use to pass a swim test. It may be helpful for you. All right. Hey, white people, y'all can come back. We good. Let's go. Let's go. I had swam before, but I had never jumped off a diving board. <laughs> Hitting the water, you're like, whoa, I wasn't expecting that. It's a shock. But not all recruits are ready to take the leap. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, no. <laughs> no, no, oh, that was fun. Oh, no, that was that was fun. They will push your ass off of there too. That's what they, I'm. I am surprised that they that they showed that. I'm very surprised that they showed that. Normally, in these type of videos, they tend to hide more from you uh, and just you know show you the things that they feel like you can handle. But no, they will push your ass off that stand. You might you might as well just fucking jump when it's your time to jump. Have to be pulled from the water during the test and sent to remedial swimming where they learn the basics of being comfortable in the water. We're just asking you to try to actually calm yourself down and realize that the water is not going to drag you under. You know, you have to cooperate with it. We have a 99.97% pass rate. Uh, we have a higher pass rate for recruits that can't swim than the Navy has of making civilians into sailors. During week three, recruits report to the Marlin Spike trainer where they get their first taste of what it's like to be aboard a Navy ship. Hand over hand, positive control. Y'all literally just did this. What is the problem? Make your right. I'm not gonna lie to you. I know bullshit finesse this whole process. To this day, I don't know how to do that shit. I like I was legit known as the finesser in boot camp. I can't tell you how much how much shit I got out of. Like I, I was just a I was just a slick motherfucker. I don't know what to tell you. One figure eight at a time. Once they do get to us, there's that nervousness. They don't know anything about a ship. It's scary. To big old vessel in the water, right? Remove the bird's nest. We teach them about how to communicate on a ship, how to tie a knot, transitioning them to be a sailor. This walkthrough, that was the easy part. Now the pressure's on. You f up, you f up. Each recruit is assigned a role that corresponds to a real member of a ship's crew. Make all preparations for getting underway. With the objectives of getting a ship underway and bringing it safely into port. Make all preparations for entering port. Hey! So at the bridge at the very I'm not gonna lie to you. I think this training is kind of pointless because a lot of people will never actually do this in their Navy career. I mean, obviously there's rates whose job is specifically, you know, to anchor uh ships into into ports, but a lot of people will never do this. So it's, I don't know. But then again, there's a lot of things in Navy boot camp that most people will never actually do in the real life Navy. It's it's I guess it's just called basic training for a reason. It's, it's basic, I guess. 
top. You have the boatswain's mate, and then we have our bridge phone talker. Mine's three and four. Singled up, bridge eye. They're gonna be having comms with the other three phone talking stations down on the actual ship. Attention on deck, attention on pier. And then the petty officers in charge relay that message to the line captain. Fake down line going inboard. Fake down line going inboard. The line captains have that script saying, single up all lines, take in all lines. Double up all lines, man. Who the f is talking? It's loud, it's chaotic, <laughs> it's hectic. <laughs> Because when they're on the actual ship, when they have actual waves moving that ship, they need to be calm, cool, and collected and resort back to their training. When I say prepare heaving line for heaving, that's when he comes over here. So you're gonna hold this so he can tie the knot. Right. It's all about communication as well as following all the safety precautions. Anything that can get you injured, you need to make sure you're aware of what that is, make sure your teammates aren't doing it either. Watch your feet, watch your feet, watch your feet. Just standing there, they can be injured. Somebody can go overboard. Somebody can trip up on a line. Take it for myself. because. Now, I will say this. With the exceptions of the gun range, when it comes time to actually learning how to do certain stuff, you'll notice that your RDCs are a little bit less in your ass. Like, don't get me wrong. If you do something stupid, they're still going to give you a nice little ass chewing. But they're more focused about you learning how to actually do the task at hand. They don't want to have a, a class of a whole bunch of people failing and unable to graduate at the end of boot camp. That doesn't make them look good. They want their class to graduate. They want their division to graduate. So you're going to notice that you're going to start seeing a little bit more of, uh, how can I put this, an understanding RDC. Now, that's for aspects that your RDCs are actually taking part in. There's going to be a lot of things that you do that your RDCs aren't necessarily the ones teaching you how to do it. It's just I'm saying at times you're going to notice that your RDCs are going to start showing a little bit more care than normal, almost like a strict ass parent that you could tell has love behind it all, but they still an asshole, if it makes sense. Because I've, I've eaten complete crap before, like falling on the deck of a ship, and it was not fun. One, two, three. Remove figure eights in round turn. Take figure eights off and then round turn. Move to safety zone. But seamanship starts in the classroom. What's a vast mean? Stop. Stop. Okay, next, what's next? Single up all lines. Folks who are. All stations, single up all lines. All stations, bridge. All stations, bridge, single up all lines. Single up all, mm. uh, oh. single up all lines. It's like speaking a different language. You got to get the hang of it. It helps that everyone else is doing it with you. So the more you hear it, it's all around you. Eventually, you won't even think about it. Just tell him the message. Bridge, single up all lines. It's Barney style. We we break it down Barney style. Barney, um, like the dinosaur? Yes, pretty much. Single up all lines. I was just about to say that. What the fuck? This is called the confidence chamber. I don't call it the gas chamber. I don't call it the torture chamber. It's none of that stuff. It is the confidence chamber. The reason you go through this is so we can prove to you that the mask works. Does that make sense? Yes, Chief! In week four, recruits are exposed to CS gas or tear gas in the confidence chamber. Who's nervous right now? Somebody tell me why you're nervous. I'm nervous about how my body's gonna react. Body's gonna react? It's gonna react accordingly. After learning how to properly don and clear the masks, the recruits head inside the chamber and wait for their turn to step to the line at the front of the room. I'm trying to remember how this went. Okay, now for the gas chamber, there is a small percentage of people in the world where this gas really doesn't affect them like that. I... <laughs> <laughs> was one of those people like I breathe that shit like it's fucking Febreze air freshener it's gonna fuck most people up they're gonna be snotting all down the nose and shit it, it, it was funny as hell now I, I can't remember if it's do you want to be in the back of the line or the front of the line I really can't remember which one it was but I, I want to say the front of the line was smarter because you um got out of there faster whereas I, I can't fucking remember I really can't remember I can't remember I can't even give you good advice on it but I'm not gonna lie you're gonna nine times out of Ten, the gas chamber gonna fuck you up a little bit i don't really know what else to tell you get the fuck over it you'll live but uh it's gonna fuck with your breathing and you're gonna be snotting down your nose and i'm gonna tell you right now as soon as you exit out of the gas chamber your rdc's are gonna be there ready to laugh at your ass because you gotta realize they're at work all day they need some entertainment and it's just gonna be funny as hell to them an instructor pours the powder inside the CS capsules onto a hot plate, filling the room with gas. Mask up, come on, let's go! 
Get that mask up! Get that stuff up! When they take off the mask, it only takes a few seconds before they feel the effects of the gas. <laughs> Some recruits don't seem affected by it, but most struggle. <laughs> they cup their hands under their chins to prevent bodily fluids from leaking onto the floor. <laughs> what does it feel like when you take that mask off? Man, I was laughing at so many people that day. Like, my recruiters thought, like, I had cheated or some shit, and the world may never know. <laughs> but that shit didn't affect me. Let me just say that. Hurts, burns a lot. It's a good sinus clear. If you're sick, you'll be able to breathe once you leave there. Sierra Kurt Morales, Division 205, hoo ya! Sierra Kurt Morales, Division 205, hoo ya! Recruits say their names and division numbers, followed by a hoo ya. Hoo ya! Let's go, go! After about 15 seconds of exposure, they're allowed to exit the chamber. Keep moving! <laughs> That's interesting that they're all like standing outside um, because we went we went and sat down after the after the gas chamber, whatever the case may be. But I don't know. Who knows? Maybe this is something new for Business Insider. We also didn't have cameras in our goddamn face all day. So who knows? It definitely wasn't fun. Definitely wouldn't you know sign up to do it again. But it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Who are you? Is it? Yo, where y'all at? Where my man yoman at? Man yoman? <laughs> Later in week four, recruits are trained to fight fires. You never know when a simple fire will break out on board the ship. Any sailor needs to be ready to combat that fire to save the ship, aircraft, submarine, you name it. Controlled fires fueled by propane tanks simulate different types of fires that could occur on a ship. A lot of them don't understand that pressure that comes through the hose. As soon as you open up that nozzle, all that pressure starts to push you backwards. They kind of hold it nonchalantly a little bit. It was one of the most hands-on experiences we got to do. Part of the teamwork that helps you realize that there's going to be points where your life is going to be in the hands of another person. It's important to pay attention because if you're not doing things correctly, you're putting someone else in danger. Recruits trained to safely fire the M9 Beretta pistol. All right, I'm gonna tell you this right now. When it comes to when it comes to the gun range, I'm gonna tell you right now. These people are on the edge like a motherfucker. Do not do anything dumb. Do not make quick movements. I'm gonna tell you right now. These motherfuckers are ready to fuck your ass up if you do. Like because you gotta understand, you gotta look at it from their uh, perspective. Like they know you've been getting <laughs> yelled at, talked to like shit ever since you've been in boot camp. And from my experience, I'm not gonna lie. A lot of the people, a lot of the instructors. Uh, for the gun range like don't get me wrong they didn't act like pussies but they didn't do the most to try to like oh, blah, 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 blah. like they, they didn't they didn't do the most either and i always imagine the reason for that being is because they don't really know what the fuck is going on inside of your head they're not trying to fucking get shot um and I, I, calm collected do what you've been taught do what you're told get it over with you know, then you're going to get whether or not you're a sharpshooter, expert shooter, marksman, whatever the case may be, uh, towards the end of it. Fun fact, they I'm actually an expert. They actually fucked my damn score up. They said um, something. I think it was my gun had jammed or some shit. But the way that I was hitting it, I was literally supposed to have been an expert uh, shooter. But they ended up giving me sharpshooter. Some bullshit. To this day, I'm still mad about that. But, yeah, don't do anything stupid as well as to assemble and disassemble it. A lot of people that come through here have minimal to zero experience. If something's incorrect, we, we fix it right away. If we see that some of them are kind of just a little bit too nervous. I'm also give you a little advice. Uh, when you're back in your room where all of you guys sleep, you're going to have to stand watches. Most of the time on your watches, you're going to have like a little, like a gun holster with a fake gun. Don't do anything stupid. I saw somebody in boot camp, uh, a friend of his asked if he could see it, and then he let him see it. And then for some reason, the friend told on him later on and told um, our chief that he asked to see his friend's gun, and he actually let him do it. And then so they kicked this motherfucker all the way back to P-Days. And I, I think we was like around week six or seven or some shit. Like we were literally right there at graduation. This motherfucker got kicked all the way back to the beginning. 
So you're thinking of it like, hey, it's just a fake gun. What, what the? Whoa, 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 whoa. But the way that they're looking at it as this is some shit you would do in the real Navy. If somebody asks to see your gun that's not authorized to have your gun, you just here you go. And they're, they're not trying to put out that bad juju into the actual fleet. So you have to treat boot camp serious. You got to treat it like like this is the real Navy, even though it's really not the real Navy yet. Hope, hopefully you get my drift. We'll talk to them, make sure that they're mentally OK and make sure that they feel safe and they feel like they're in a good environment. Why should Navy sailors need to be qualified to shoot weapons? I would say most typically on watch, that's when we have to stand watch and provide some sort of security. If someone steps on board a vessel, anything seems kind of weird, um, kind of sketchy, then we would have to employ that weapon if things start to escalate. Here's the bullshit about that statement. Unless you're standing, unless you're literally in security or like your TAD to security or whatever the case may be, most watches that you stand, you won't actually have a weapon. If anything, when somebody, if somebody wanted to walk onto the ship, unless you have security nearby, you're going to get, you're going to be the first one to get fucked up, which honestly, I think that's something that big Navy should reconsider or change. Doesn't make sense to me. But again, her, her statement, there's shades of gray to it. It's really not that black and white. Like Boot camp culminates with an event known as Battle Stations. I think it's so interesting because if I remember correctly, roughly around week eight, that's when we were graduating. But again, boot camp has been pushed to 10 weeks now. So it's kind of it's kind of interesting that they're now just about to do Battle Stations. It happens inside this building, which may not look like much from the outside, but inside the recruits encounter this. The USS Trayer. It's a two-thirds scale replica of a Navy destroyer ship designed and built by companies that created attractions for Walt Disney World. Good evening, Division. Battle station. Now, every sailor is going to have to sign a piece of paperwork saying that they will not talk about what happened in battle stations. Obviously, you could talk about it with other sailors or whatever the case may be, but like, I can't legally tell you what goes on in battle stations. However, I will say this, uh, prepare, prepare to be sleepy, <laughs> prepare to be very, very sleepy. That's as much as I can say. This is an accumulation of every training evolution you've done throughout basic mixed with a little bit of sleep deprivation. <laughs> so I think it's the closest thing any of us are going to get to what being on a ship's like. Although the Navy agreed to let our crew film parts of the Battle Stations event, we weren't allowed to show major details of the scenarios or solutions to the problems recruits have to solve. Prepare to be pissed off. Yes, right on, sir! So it goes over 17 different scenarios from firefighting to seamanship, first aid. So all of those combined into one special night. A special and long night. Recruits are not allowed to sleep during the event. Doors go. I do not what are you telling? I do not are care. you telling me? Are you telling Petty Officer? Or are you telling your CLS? Tell the CLS. Doors go, CLS. When they say when you get the fleet, you got to be able to handle sleep deprivation. You really do. You have to be able to handle doing the right thing, even when it's very stressful, even when you're cold, wet, tired. I can't believe I didn't say this yet, but in boot camp, there are times where you get offered opportunities to take on uh, side duties. Like, say, for example, uh, maybe a yeoman, the person that, like, handles, like, paperwork or like, like, or, pe or maybe someone who cleans the bathroom, that cleans the heads. Let me tell you something. If you get any type of side duties, make sure it's ones that involve leadership. Leadership. You don't want to you don't want to be in charge of leadership. Tired, sleepy, and even when your peers may not be in the right mindset either. The first scenario we saw involved a burst water pipe in a room full of ammunition shells that recruits had to move while trying to patch the pipe. If you can't do it alone, ask for help. They use their firefighting skills to put out I'm actually very interested that they're, that they're even showing you this. I still feel like I can't talk much about it, but I'm interested that they're, it's interesting that they're showing you this much. Not a fire that breaks out on board. We have a 
have all the sound effects, the lighting, the smoke, just because we want to make sure it's as realistic as possible. Uh, once you go out to the ship, if there is ever, you know, an emergency situation that happened, we want to kind of reflect that here. We were allowed to film inside one of the training areas built to resemble the damage suffered by the USS Cole in the deadly attack in October of 2000, with details down to the clock on the wall, which is stopped on the minute the real attack occurred. But when the scenario starts, recruits don't notice such details. People are dying! People are dying! They have to locate and evacuate a casualty through thick smoke over. I'm going to say this. This is one of the reasons why, even though a lot of the things that you learn in boot camp, you may or may not actually ever apply in the actual fleet. The thing about it is, is that I have to remind you that you are in the military and shit could pop off any day. So there are you definitely want to take boot camp serious in the sense of learn what you can learn. And obviously, when you get out to the actual fleet, they're still going to be training on shit. It's not like this one time thing and you never have to think about it again. Like, no, there's going to be training. You're going to be brushing up on uh, you're going to be getting qualifications and brushing up on what to do in certain situations and all of that. But take it serious. You want you want to have it in here that once you get out to the real fleet, anything can happen any day. Hopefully it doesn't. But you are in the military. Obstacles and in total darkness. Some people like working under stress because they say pressure either produces diamonds or it bursts pipes. It was really fun. I would definitely do it again, maybe after a full night's rest, but I would 100% do battle stations again. It's a night I will never forget. He's smoking. He's not nah, fuck that. He's smoking dick. I ain't no way in the hell. <laughs> So I don't give a fuck if I did get a full night's sleep. No. 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 I'm not going to lie, though. I kind of would like to watch other people do it. Like, I feel like it would be a lot more entertaining from a spectating perspective than a me having to do it first person perspective. After battle stations is complete, recruits line up in front of the USS Trayer to receive their Navy ball cap, symbolizing their transition from recruits to Navy sailors. They realize everything that they have done thus far, all the, the blood, sweat, and tears they shed, they finally earned their Navy ball cap, and it's a proud moment for all of them. You know what's funny? As much as I want to sit here and pretend like this moment didn't chalk me up, it did. But when I look back at it, I look at I look back at it like this. <laughs> That's what's so interesting about watching videos like this is that you you watch these videos from a perspective of someone that's already been there, but once you're doing it, you're not going to have this perspective that I have now. However, once you graduate and you get your feet wet, maybe a year or two in the, in the Navy, you come back and watch videos like this, you're kind of more than likely going to at least relate or understand where I'm coming from when I say I look at it like this. That morning was extremely emotional. I was definitely more proud of that than anything I've ever done before. Nothing compares to that moment. Friends and family gather to witness their new sailors graduate before joining the fleet. You see the change. You have some. <laughs> Yo, I was a fool at this. I saw the guy like I was literally like thug walking, gangster walking, and shit. <laughs> Just uh, give the people that was in the crowd a show, but uh, don't don't do that. That's that's hard. That's don't don't be like me. I'm just I'm just telling you what I did. Don't don't do not be like me. Some recruits that you never thought they were gonna make it past training, but once they graduate and you see that wow, they grasp the point of this. You know they're gonna be out there, out in the fleet. It's really rewarding. Seeing recruits come off the bus with long hair, not knowing they're left to the right, not knowing how to wear a uniform. And seeing that okay here's the thing so most of these videos always try to give you this sense of pride at the end i'm gonna be honest with you i mean i get it you you went through something challenging and you came out on the other end but i'm gonna be real with you you're a recruit a, a recruit apprentice once you get out into the actual fleet you you're gonna get reminded real fucking quick how low on the on the totem pole you really are like it's not like people are gonna look at you and be like sailor 
how are you doing today? No, like, I'm not going to lie to you. You're going to be talk shit too. People going to treat you like a piece of shit. Like you're going to start seeing the real unfortunate side of the Navy and un- the unfortunate culture oftentimes in the Navy. Obviously, you know, there are some commands that's better than others. Not everybody has the same experience in the Navy. What I'm saying is don't expect to graduate boot camp and then go out into the real fleet and all of a sudden get treated like a king, like a god among men. Like, no. Now, if you were an officer, I'm not going to lie to you, you get a little, a lot more respect day one um, in the real fleet versus an enlisted recruit, you know, or uh, or airman apprentice or, or seaman apprentice or whatever the case may be. Like, so... Once you graduate boot camp and you wearing a certain type of hat, you will start seeing people saying, you know, good morning, shipmate and all that instead of just calling, you know, just start calling you recruit or whatever the case may be. But even then, that don't really mean shit, because in the real Navy, when someone calls you shipmate, it's almost like calling you a bitch. Like, if, if, I'm, if I'm being honest with you, like, no, no re- real sailors do not like the word shipmate because it is almost always used in a derogatory sense. Oh, oh shit, I wasn't supposed to say that. I was supposed to say, um, hello, shipmate. Like, no, shipmate is a backhanded statement. It, it really is. And the real fleet is a backhanded statement. Transition that they make from a civilian to a recruit to a sailor is truly eye-watery and truly a blessing. Daddy, I left. Daddy, I left. My daddy said. I shook my daddy's hand. If you found the video entertaining or helpful, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more, and drop down in the comment section below and let me know what you would like to see next and what you thought about this video in particular. Not a living the baby girl. Thank you guys so much for joining the Go Form. I will see you guys on the next video. Peace. Oh me, oh me, oh me, oh me. Wow, 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 wow. Have you? Have you not subscribe? Not subscribe. Subscribe to the video. It's like meant to like you're like you're supposed to get like bullshit gifts. For people. It's like oh. a game, kind of like a funny game. Right. Like they like they give you a pocket pussy or something. <laughs>